Welcome to part 4 of repairing a Stuart Twin Victoria model steam engine. This one is called looking at the other side of the engine. I don't mean looking at the dark side, I mean looking at the side of the engine that's not been removed from the plinth. And the first thing that I'm checking is whether or not the piston on this side also hits the rear cylinder cover. And it doesn't appear to, but only just. I can feel some resistance when the piston rod gets to the end of its stroke. And also in common with the other side of the engine, I can see that someone has attempted to remedy this by enlarging the hole in the small end, so it's a bit of a rattle fit on the shaft. And as you can both see in here, the engine runs okay on one side only. By the way, the piece of light coloured wood in the centre of the picture towards the right is a piece of plywood that I put down to stop the eccentric rod from marking the surface of the plinth. In an attempt to find out where most of the knocking's coming from, I'm currently lubricating the moving parts with steam oil. As standard superheated steam oil is extremely viscous, it sticks to the parts and stops them from rattling about. So after I'd oiled up the engine, I turned on the compressed air and gave the flywheel a push. And even though it seems to run okay, it runs quite a lot like a lot of the steam engines I see on YouTube, it sounds a little bit like a pneumatic drill. That's because the valve events are not correct. It's got late admission at one end and early admission at the other end. The early admission needs to take place at both ends of the stroke. That way, the air or steam cushions the piston and sends it back down the cylinder in the opposite direction. In an attempt to further investigate the knocking, I screwed the piston rod into the crosshead firmly because it was unscrewed a couple of turns. And in the same way as in the previous episode, I used a short piece of brass banding to stop the pliers from marking the piston rod. And by turning the engine over manually, I can now feel that the piston is actually touching the rear cover at the end of its stroke. So what I did was return the piston rod to the way it was before I tightened it up with the pliers. And before I move into the next section of the video, I must caution everyone, do not do this. I am doing it, I am not recommending that anyone else who is watching the video ever does it. What I am doing is holding the valve in the correct position, sort of helping the valve along. I can safely say that I have done this for many many years and I have got all 8 of my fingers still left. A model steam engine running on 20 pounds per square inch is very bad if it has a 1 inch cylinder. Little Mammods and Willescos don't really do much, there is no power at all. One of these would give you a really nasty nip, probably it would break your finger thinking about it. And if I was working on one of my own engines, I probably would make a balsa wood finger, complete with a fingernail, and stick it in the works to show you how it fell apart. But as this is not my engine, and the owner of the engine would not like bits of balsa wood all over it, I'll give that a miss. And whilst on the subject of wood, this is really bothering me. The veneer has come away at one end of the plinth. Not only has it come away like this, it's come away in like a bubble in the middle. I think it's probably stuck with contact adhesive and it's just let go. The easiest way to remove veneer like this is not to use a knife. Do not use a sharp knife. Sometimes it removes like this by just tapping a steel ruler along it. Very carefully, very gently. But it depends how well it's stuck. Now that was okay but it's not so good going in the other direction. As you can see, the veneer is very well stuck in this area. Not in the middle where the big bubble is, so I'm now committed to removing it. And here I'm cutting off the old piece of veneer with my knife. It's very, very thin veneer. It's not something I would use. If I veneer anything, I tend to use thicker wood, because steam engines generate quite a lot of oil, heat and water, none of which is good for veneer. So once I removed this last piece of veneer that was firmly stuck to the block, using a knife, and I didn't video it because I forgot to press the record button because I was busy. So once the veneer was removed, I used a piece of coarse sandpaper on a block, and it now looks like this. Then I used some polyurethane varnish applied with a cloth to seal the grain, because I didn't want to get any oil on it as I work on the engine. That's it for now, because looking at the clock it's time to go to Blackgate's engineering to get the piston rings. So thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.